Hey guys, Cody here, KIG Outdoors, and today behind me I have the brand new 2018 Troy Built Riding Lawnmower. It is a Bronco with a 42 inch cut and a 19 horsepower Kohler motor. I'm going to go over some of the things that I like and I don't like, go over some of the specs, go over some of the capacities, tires, widths, um, weights, turning radiuses, and all that good stuff. Then what we'll do is maybe do a small comparison between the Bronco and the and the pony and then uh, show a little bit not a whole lot a little bit in action and then I'll give my honest for my honest uh, opinion about this lawnmower so let's get started guys all right guys so I want to start this review out underneath the hood there's a couple things I want to point out to you real quick that should be a kind of a selling feature for this riding lawnmower versus the pony um, when I say the pony Troy built puts out another lawnmower it's the same identical I mean there's nothing no different other than two things the motor and the price that is the two things that are different you can get the pony with the uh, i think it's a tr with a 17.5 briggs and strat underneath of it and about 200 dollars less so my opinion that 200 dollars goes a long ways with this motor this motor is a Kohler 5400 series 19 horsepower 541 cc motor this thing is some good good stuff i really i really like it one thing to note about it it is a full pressure oil system on this mower on this motor what that means is is it has oil pump in there and it, instead of like in the old back in the old times when you had motors in uh, lawn mowers and stuff they would the crank would splash oil and which this one probably still does but they don't primarily re rely on that system so crank comes around goes through the oil pan gathers up oil and it splashes it all throughout the whole motor this thing has actually got an oil pump on it and it's taking picking oil up putting it at the top of the motor where it needs to be and letting it fall down so that is a uh, really good thing to see in such a small motor the other thing that i want to point out oil filter if you're buying a ride lawnmower and that thing doesn't have a replaceable oil filter on it you probably don't need to be buying it because they don't plan on it lasting so guys that that's a that's a huge plus on that Another thing I want to point about this is anything that you see in yellow, anywhere on this Troy Built Bronco, uh, you, you have accessibility to. That is, those are removable pieces that you can take off. Like underneath this cover is your air filter. You want to be able to take that off. You want to have ease of access to get underneath there, clean that bad, th bad boy off, put it back on, and go on down the road and keep on mowing. Uh, another, another thing that is yellow is the oil drain plug. It's, the cap on it's oil, so... Just put a pan underneath there, twist it, drain your oil, and refill it back up. And this is also the dipstick oil fill spot. It's yellow. Um, guys, it's, uh, it's, it's that simple. I mean, they have made it to where um, you can service this motor. Even up to the point where Troy Belt has made this hood quickly detach So that you can service the front of this motor you can get in there and clean this thing out you can change the spark plug but all you got to do is remove two light bulb um, connections inside the hood and pull it off and you have access to the front of this motor with no nothing stopping you you can get in there and clean it get in there and service your spark plugs whatever you think you may do even if you have to do something stupid and pull the motor out of it i mean guys it just it just makes it that much better um so that was some well planning and a uh, thought process behind that i really like that so we'll move away from the motor now and we'll go straight into the the fuel tank this thing is a 1.36 gallon fuel tank now for the last past three models that i'm aware of 16 17 18 they all have this 1.36 gallon capacity fuel tank um, do i like it no uh, the reason that I don't like it is because I feel like you're mowing in uh, about every hour Especially if you're even pushing even harder, you know hour hour and a half you're out of fuel You're down somewhere on the other end of the uh, of your place and you run out and you got to walk all the way back up So yeah, it's just a little bit of aggravation. They may do it for fire reasons or uh, Maybe that's as big as the government will let them put on an actual riding lawnmower maybe if you bump the fuel tank up you got to bump a class up and that probably costs more so they're probably trying to do it to save you all and us money so i would highly recommend this riding lawnmower just for the motor the bronco has the color motor that is the only thing that you can get 
it, the Bronco in is with the color motor. Uh, you actually take a step down and get the pony for the, for the Briggs and Strat. So, like I said, guys, if that, you know, if you, it, there's really no difference. If $200 is going to break you, then I guess buy the pony. I mean, I, I don't know what you're thinking. I mean, I just, I, I just don't like Briggs and Stratton, my opinion. So let's talk about everything else now. Let's talk about the chassis. We went on about the motor. We went on about the hood. Let's go ahead and talk about the chassis. It's the same. It's the same chassis from 2016, 2017, 2018. I cannot tell anything different. I will still go over some of the specs on it. But even, I mean, guys, when I'm saying everything is the same, steering wheel is the same, tires are the same, decks the same, seats the same, battery location is the same, everything's the same. Now, if you don't know where none of that is, we'll go over it real quick. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and shout out some dimensions real quick. Uh, this thing is actually 70.5 total length by 48 inches wide so what that means is you need at least a four and a half foot by six foot long trailer to haul this thing on minimum which is an odd size trailer and i don't know unless you've custom made that you're probably not going to find it but make sure that you get something that is wider and longer than this thing is uh, the next thing we'll go into these are the 15 by 6 uh, turf saver 2 front tires uh, you have the 20 by 8 turf saver 2 tires on the back same tires they do a really good job when you turn uh, they're kind of designed so that when you turn sharp you're not ripping your grass out you're actually biting you know and being able to get traction to turn so you're not ripping your grass out um, we'll move on to the deck the deck is actually a 42 inch and like i said it's the actual dimension is 48 but it is actually a 42 inch 13 gauge steel side discharge mower it has two blades has two anti uh, anti uh scallop blades on it that's basically if you get up on a hill on one side and the other side's hanging down low it's supposed to kick down onto that uh roller and keep you from you know just killing all that grass right there just scalping that grass those are adjustable i think you have three four three or four uh choices on height um brake pedals are all the same like i said steering wheels still the same um even the rear end's the same so uh, next thing that I'll probably talk about is uh, the positions, the levers, and uh, how do you make this thing go and everything else. And uh, then we'll go on to the actual performance. So let's go. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and go over these real quick. This is your uh, height adjustment for your deck. You have five positions, one, two, three, four, five. When you're in one, the minimum, that is lowest to the ground you will cut all the way down to one inch tall grass or actually inch and a half tall grass i'm sorry inch and inch and a half as low as it will go and in the five position that's max height you're only going to you're going to be cutting at uh three and a half inches so that's as high as you can go this lever over here is your pt on P pto on pto off um simple as that you have to be sitting in the seat to be able to to engage this or otherwise it will not engage also if you're in reverse without hitting your yellow button you cannot uh, mow and you cannot turn this uh, pto um, engagement on over here we have uh, forward neutral and reverse it's as simple as it sounds uh, forward reverse neutral like i said to be in reverse mowing there's actually a key switch right here that you have to um, move back in one position hit this yellow button so that you can actually uh, be able to mow in reverse battery is located underneath the seat steering wheel is still the same throttle control is right here you have slow is all the way down choke is all the way up and there's actually a little spot that is cut out that is made for optimal running rpm so that's pretty cool now we'll go over the pedals real quick so the pedal on your right is actually how you make the machine go. The harder you push that pedal down, the faster you will go. You'll notice right now that you cannot push it, and it's because this is your brake. The brake has actually got a part brake, which is tied up here under, on this yellow uh, switch. So anytime that you know I park this in the garage, I always put the park brake on. Cool thing about that is, is if you have the park brake, park brake applied, that you can start this. don't have to actually be on the seat the seat switch is not affected by that but the minute that you take the park brake off you can no longer start this 
So to apply the park brake, just push all the way down, take your thumb, you'll actually hear it click in, release, and your park brake is engaged. Something else that I want to go over, guys, if you've got kids, you've got grandkids, and you know, just people that have little ones that come around, one thing that you may want to do is take the key out, guys. Take the key out. And the reason that I say that is, is for the simple fact of what I just showed you. When I leave this in the garage, I leave the park brake applied, and uh, let's just say a little kid comes out here and he gets out here and he starts this, and you left it in forward gear, because it does not matter what gear you're in to start this. And he gets up in here and starts this, and he's just messing around. Next thing you know, he's taking off down the road in your lawnmower. It's just something that you don't want to happen. You don't want to see anybody get hurt, and it's just a great precaution as an uh, as an owner just to take the key out when you go. Try not to leave it in there, and things will be a better better for you um, one a couple other things i'll go over you got a cup holder here and you actually got a cubby hole here i'm sadly to say i have an s8 phone and i like to listen to music while i'm out here and my phone will fit in there but i feel like i'm gonna lose it so there is technically nowhere for me to keep my phone when i'm mowing and uh it, that's one thing that i don't like about this ride lawnmower i didn't like it on the 2016 either I mean, it'll fit in there, it will ride, but man, it feels like I'll, I'm always checking it. I'm always looking down to make sure it's always there because I feel like I'm going to run over my, my phone. But um, it is a nice feature to have. Um, you know, something's better than nothing. So real quick, we'll go over uh, the battery location. This is the battery, negative, positive. Uh, most of the times when you buy this lawnmower, it already comes pre-done. Pre, uh, I think this is a 12 volt, 155 cold cranking amps. 12 volt system this is your uh, safety switch for your seat if this is not engaged when you're riding it or if you have problems later on your machine doesn't want to run because it doesn't see the switch youtube it you can fix it trust me guys uh, next thing i want to go over is a uh, seat adjustment i'm six foot seven i have big legs and i like to be away from the seat so if you have little legs and short, the seat is fully adjustable. All you got to do is put those in there and you can adjust this to any length that suits you. But, so that's pretty cool to know and uh, a nice little option. So down below, you do have a choice to be able to haul a trailer. I would not recommend hauling anything that's going to put a lot of downward pressure on it. This thing uh, is not made to take downward pressure it's more of kind of be to haul something that has wheels on it that has support in its own weight this is just kind of going to be what's pulling it if you're going to be applying the pressure down to it i would advise against it and uh it this thing it goes pretty good with the trailer behind it um i haul my log splitter all the time with it uh just around the yard when i'm splitting wood it does a really good job so uh, they do make attachments where that you can actually make this higher. It's pretty neat. You can put a ball and all kinds of stuff on there. And uh, speaking of attachments, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about some of the other attachments. Troy Built makes a couple different attachments. Uh, one being where you can remove. Well, I don't even think you remove it. I think you just kick it up and there's a bunch of holes and access points that has a cover that goes over for a mulching system if you want to mulch it. Um, you obviously, you change the blades and then it becomes a mulcher. They also have tire chains, weights, plows, uh, bag catchers. Guys, uh, Troy Bill has done a really good job for attachments. Um, the only attachment that I'm really looking at right now, I actually have the mulcher from my 2016 uh, Troy Bill. It will fit on here. I actually kept the blades off of it. So I'll probably end up putting that on here in the long run. But the only real thing that I want to do is put a uh, push bar. But I may not buy a Troy Belt push bar. I may make a custom one. So maybe I'll do a video about that later on. Um, I think it might be a look pretty good because uh, one thing I realized is if you can't stop and you're going down a hill, the first thing you're going to crush is your, uh, is your exhaust. And I'd say that ain't too cheap. All right, guys. So let's talk. Let's talk real quick. The difference between a Bronco and a Pony is the $200 worth it. My opinion, yes. The reason I say that is Briggs and Strat has got a name for themselves right now that I, I just don't know if they'll ever be able to bounce back from. Um, they're becoming really unreliable. Their parts are starting to become really cheap and they're selling out. Um, that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Um, the second thing is, is the money, guys. It's $200 more than you, I think you get two more horsepower so it's a hundred dollars a horsepower almost i think it's a 17.5 this is 19 but close to a hundred dollars 
per horsepower and uh, I think it's worth every penny of it. Lawnmower is basically the same everywhere else. It just comes down to the engine. Do you feel like you can do okay with the Troy built 17.5 Briggs and Strat? Congratulations. Uh, I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. I, I can't say that I have owned one and had problems out of it. I have not. I've had problems out of the, of the Kohler. Um, matter of fact, my 2016 Kohler, I was mowing out here not about three weeks ago, mowing around, and actually broke the connecting rod inside for the piston. It uh, didn't come out, but it just it just come off, the cap come off the bottom of the crank. Called up uh, Troy Belt, called Lowe's. Kind of got a little bit of run around, but uh, long story short, I ended up getting a new lawnmower out of the deal. So, and that's that has nothing to do. I'm not sponsored by them. Not sponsored by anybody. Just that was Troy built taking care of a problem that uh, had come up. So, I like that. I like that they warranty their product. But something that I have kind of concerns me on these lawnmowers is I went into my local Lowe's when I was trying to find one of these, and I noticed Lowe's isn't selling Troy built no more. They're kind of moving away from Troy built. So. The, that does scare me a little bit because I kind of Googled and see who else sold Troy built where I live in Kentucky. And the only place I come up with was Lowe's. So if Lowe's quit selling Troy built, I, I don't know uh, if you'll be able to buy this model here pretty soon. So maybe this thing might go up in value. Oh yeah, I might have to put this in the garage. But anyway, guys, this thing is a great lawnmower. I, I, uh, a couple things that I want to go over also uh, on Troy Built's website. This thing gets like a 4.3 out of or 4.1, 4.3 out of five stars. Read the reviews, guys. Everybody needs to read reviews on any product you buy. If you're going to go buy something that costs this amount of money, read them. You want to read the bad ones and you want to read the good ones. Um, I think I read one bad one. This guy uh, he gave it a one star. He said that the first time he was mowing, there's actually a steering gear down in here. It's stripped out the first time he was mowing it. So hopefully, Troy Built took care of the problem and uh, made it, you know, good for him. Um, and then you've got other people that just love them. I love this lawnmower. I've even had bad experiences, and I still love Troy Built lawnmowers. The reason that I love them is the price range. You know, I have less than a half an acre. I might, mow, I might mow an acre out here at the pond, and for the price versus something that is made to mow five acres, three to five acres, is just double this. It's almost, sometimes it's triple. So for me to be able to buy something that's affordable and still get the job done, I'm all about that. Now that brings up another topic. Troy Build actually, on their specifications, recommends this lawnmower as a um, two to three acre lawnmower. Now, I don't agree with that, and the reason that I don't agree with that is, is I think if you're going to mow three acres, you probably need to step it up. If, if you are pushing three acres every Saturday that you go out and mow your yard, you're almost kind of, it's almost kind of crazy that you'd even try to even buy this lawnmower. It might be the only thing you can afford. I'm not holding that against you, but uh, definitely be looking for a bigger lawnmower. The 42 inch cut. I mean, it probably will do the job, but you are going to wear this lawnmower out. It's going to take everything this little lawnmower has got for that three acres, and it's just going to run, run its butt in the, in the dirt. And not only that, time-wise, guys, if 42 inches versus a 60, you're almost making two passes compared to, you know, 42 inches. So time is a, it gets into time as money, so... We'll go ahead and uh, show you a little bit of me mowing. I've got some aerial shots, a little side shot, nothing too fancy. Um, then we'll go on to talking about how I, f how I feel, how I feel like the machine did out here. So roll that beautiful bean footage. So guys, my honest opinion, and as you can see on the video, I am mowing some stuff that is probably as tall as the tire, maybe if not taller. I mean, some of the weeds are as tall as the hood. The thing did great. I mowed that, um, no problems only problem that i really seen was on the discharge it was getting clogged it was so tall as you would go down through there it would push the grass out and the, the grass beside it would catch it and so when you come back through you had a clump of grass that you were trying to mow through and it would just it would just it was clogged that deck up bigger than crap which is expected guys i'm not i'm not dogging it for any 
dogging them for any reason. Uh, this thing performed like it should. It's just that I couldn't get the grass away. It, it actually isn't supposed to be mowing stuff like that, guys. So I put it through the ultimate test, and I mowed a whole acre just like that. And, guys, I did it. It did take me a little bit longer. I think I ended up using two gallons of gas because I had to go slow, and this I was working this thing. But, guys, so far, so good. I will try to come back and do another year review on it, let you know what has broke, what has been damaged, what is not working, what I had to fix, and we will go from there, guys. But uh, other than that, I give this thing two thumbs up, and I highly recommend the Bronco. So go get yourself a Bronco before you can't find no more, because I don't know what Lowe's is doing, but anyway. So guys, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. If y'all want to see anything, any other kind of reviews done, or if you have any questions about the, the lawnmower, drop them down in the comments, guys. I'll try my hardest to answer them. I am by no means a professional, but I am, I'm opinionated, and uh, I think just about anybody in this world should be having an opinion about something. So I'll give you my two cents on it, and whether I like it or I don't, or if you like it or you don't, so be it. But uh, guys, I appreciate y'all stopping by. I have a couple new more videos coming out, so keep your eye out for them, and uh, we'll catch you on the next review, guys. See y'all.